Damascus stresses that news about contacting the Office of Political and Media Presidential Advisor regarding the suicide of British doctor as being groundless. Units of the Syrian Arab army kill and wound dozens of terrorists, including different nationalities, in Idlib, Aleppo, and Damascus. Five people were wounded when terrorists detonated an explosive device inside a passenger vehicle in the capital, Cairo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mirado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The Office of the Political and Media Advisor at the Presidency, Dr. Buthayna Shaban, has dismissed as baseless reports by the Lebanese Al Jadid TV and Al Jumhuriya Daily that the office has been contacted by anyone on the suicide incident of British Dr. Abbas Khan Shah. The Foreign and Expatriates Ministry had summoned on the 18th of this month the representative of the Czech Embassy in Damascus in his capacity as the person in charge of the British Interests Section in Syria and handed him a medical report on the suicide case of British national Abbas Khan Shah, who had illegally entered Syrian territories and carried out banned activities. The report pointed out that Khan Shah died of suffocation caused by hanging and that he had hanged himself, that is, the incident was done by the person himself with the intention of suicide and that no traces of violence, strain or resistance has appeared, whether by X-ray or otherwise, on the body. The Deputy Foreign and Expatriates Minister, Dr. Faisal Maqdad, stressed during his reception of the Czech Embassy's official in Damascus that Syria was about to hand over this citizen to his mother and to the Member of Parliament at the British House of Commons, Mr. George Galloway, who interfered in the order to grant Khan Shah a pardon. Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid Al Muallim today discussed with the Indian Acting Assistant Foreign Minister Mr. Sandeep Kumar ways of enhancing bilateral relations and the efforts exerted for the convention of the International Conference on Syria in Geneva. Minister Muallim referred to the war waged against the Syrian state and people by the terrorist groups whose members belong to more than 80 countries. Therefore, he stressed the Geneva Conference should focus as a priority on combating terrorism and compelling the state that offer support to the terrorists to stop funding and arming them. Mr. Muallim affirmed that ending terrorism in Syria is the basis of a successful political solution. On his part, Kumar said his country was following up the situation in Syria and was working with a number of concerned states to restore security and stability to it. He also expressed India's appreciation for the Syrian leadership's support for India's desire to take part in the conference. In the town of Jeroud in Damascus countryside, Sheikh Firas Krezan, the Imam of al-Bashir Mosque, was assassinated by an armed terrorist group in front of the mosque. Meanwhile, units of the Syrian Arab army killed a number of terrorists in Jasreen town, including one Jordanian, one Tunisian and another of Libyan nationality. The Syrian Arab army also targeted an armed terrorist group near Al-Fatih Mosque in Al-Mleha, killing a number of terrorists, including one from Afghanistan and another from Tunisia. 
In Aleppo, army units eliminated a number of terrorists and injured others in the villages and towns of Aquarius, Arbid, Jdeide, Al Zarzur, Kafin, Azaz, Mayer, Hretan, and Oram in Aleppo countryside. Other units destroyed terrorist cars along with the weapons and ammunition inside them near Aleppo central prison, the industrial city of Hafin, Der Hafer, Hausan, Al Bab, and on the Castello Road. Large numbers of terrorists were eliminated in a series of army operations targeting the hideouts and gatherings in Khan al-Asal, Kafarnaha, Ma'arret al-Artik and al-Mansura. In Idlib countryside, units of the Syrian Arab army targeted terrorist groups in Taftanaz, Ma'arret al-Nu'man, Ma'arret Masreen, Sarmin and Mijreen, killing and wounding dozens of them as their weapons and vehicles were also destroyed. In Iraq, several soldiers were wounded when a blast caused by an explosive device targeted Iraqi army personnel in heat west of Ramadi. Following the explosion, clashes erupted between the army and armed men. The area was sealed off by the security forces who launched a campaign of inspection in the region. Following the Iraqi government's decision to close its borders with Jordan, the Iraqi armed forces continued their clamp down on Al-Qaeda organization's strongholds in Al-Ambar desert. Iraqi warplanes destroyed caves and rocky cavities in Huran and Al-Abyad valleys and Sawab wells near the Syrian borders, where the terrorists had moved to flee the strikes of the Iraqi army. Al Jazeera and Al Badia troops also repelled another attack launched by Jabhat al-Nusra from Syria territories, killing 11 Nusra attackers and wounding others. Another unit destroyed 12 vehicles and killed its occupants and blew up a big warehouse of weapons and explosives west of Al-Ambar. In Al-Abbasi Desert and Al-Riyadh, southwest of Kirkuk, Governorate, the 12th Brigade, together with Kirkuk Police, destroyed the strongholds of the so-called the Islamic State of Iraq and the Sham and a Sunnah Partisans Army and dismantled three cells who had been responsible for detonating houses in al hwaje capturing 38 terrorists, including four leaders of the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and the Sham. In Salah al-Din Governorate, the Iraqi police destroyed the headquarters of the terrorist Al-Qaeda organization, killing all the terrorists therein. In Egypt, five people were wounded when terrorists detonated an explosive device in a passenger vehicle in front of Al-Azhar University in the capital, Cairo. The wounded victims were transported to the hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, security experts found and dismantled a locally manufactured explosive device planted in the garden adjacent to the street next to a school complex. The explosion followed a statement by the Egyptian government, which considered the Muslim Brotherhood to be a terrorist organization. Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan suffered the worst blow in his political life when three of his ministers quit the cabinet, including old friend, and called for his resignation, the latest fallout from a corruption investigation that threatens to undermine party. Erdogan fired a fourth minister late last night and announced a broad new cabinet lineup. In response, the Turkish lira hit record lows against the US dollar and the euro today. The unusual upheaval underscores mounting challenges facing Erdogan ahead of a lengthy election cycle that starts in March as thousands of Turks took to the streets demanding his immediate resignation. Saidnaya is a famous Syrian city which is an ancient religious site for holy figures and saints with Aramaic language is still spoken today by local inhabitants. The city of Saidnaya is one of the main villages in the Qalamun Mountains located on a hill southwest of Ashirubi Mountain which is 1,350 meters above sea level. The village is surrounded with rocket hills covered with different types of trees and plants. Sednaya is 12 kilometers far from Damascus, stretching along 5,100 hectares of fertile soil to the left of the highway near Mnin Valley. 
Because of its historical and touristic importance, travelers and men of religion wrote about it extensively as being a site of the Syriac civilization, with the ancient Aramaic language is still spoken today by the local inhabitants of the area. The town of Sednaya houses a number of famous churches, chapels, monasteries and holy sites like Mar Georges Monastery, Martuma and Asherubi, among many others, which have become a favorite touristic attraction over hundreds of years. And the Lady of Sednaya's Monastery is the icon of Holy Virgin Mary, which is one of the four original copies drawn by Saint Tuma. And now over to latest business and market news, but after a short break. 